In this lesson, variables and expressions, we're going to start by taking a look at some of the most basic vocabulary and concepts associated with Algebra 1. The first is exactly what is a variable. Well, a variable is a symbol, usually a letter, that represents the value of a quantity. So if I have an expression such as 2x plus 3, the different parts that are denoted here are the 2x and the 3. The 2x is our variable statement. The x represents some unknown value. It could change. It is variable. The 2 tells us how many there are. So when I say 2x, no symbol in between for math, that represents 2 times x. The plus 3 here, which has no variable, is called our constant. So we have 2x plus 3 representing some unknown quantity until we know what x is. Next up is numerical expression. A numerical expression is a mathematical phrase that includes only numbers and mathematical operators. For instance, if I were to say 2 times 4 plus 3 minus 6 divided by 3 plus 5 times 7. Since the only thing included here are numbers and mathematical operators, meaning our addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, this is a numerical expression. Now if I have something similar to that but includes variables, we have an algebraic expression. Specifically, an algebraic expression is defined as a mathematical phrase that includes one or more variables. So this could take on a lot of uh, forms. For instance, our original 2x plus 3, because this has the variable x. We could say L times W, which includes the operator of multiplication, but then only variables, L and W. We could say 5m plus 2p divided by R, which has a mixture of numbers, operators, and variables, but simply because it has at least one variable, it is an algebraic expression. Now, expressions and equations are different. Expressions have no equal sign and can be simplified. Equations, which we will study later, include equal signs and are to be solved. So differences in vocabulary there as well. Now, how do we use models and use English sentences in order to denote different forms of algebraic expressions? So if we start out with the sentence, 84 more than a number n, well, I can take my representation here and mark this up for different items. For instance, if I call the small part n and the large part 84, I'm placing these together in such a way that it makes this mathematical phrase. So what I end up with is n plus 84, or we could also say 84 plus n. The phrase more than in here interprets out as addition. Next, if I say 37 less a number p. Now the wording on these sometimes is awkward, but what we have is in here we have our variable p, and we have some unknown value contained there, and then this entire thing is our 137. So when we go out and write this, what we would end up with is 137 minus p. So we are starting with 137 and we are going less by the value of p. So this would less denotes subtraction and we're told what the variable is. If you're told what the variable is, make sure in math you use that given variable. If you aren't told what the variable is, then you can select one of your choosing. Typically, the variable chosen in algebra is x, but it doesn't always have to be so. Next, we have 9 times a number u. So what we have in our representation is the variable u 
repeated at the exact same size nine times. So we would end up with nine times u, nine u, or nine u. Any of these three expressions are equivalent. You can see the multiplication dot. You can have no symbol at all or your second item can be listed in parentheses and it still come out to having the same meaning. All these are nine times this unknown value of u. So taking English sentences and translating them into mathematical ones is one way of being able to work with variables and put them out as expressions. So next up, we have to take a look at what these sentences look like, what our expressions would be when we have multiple operations happening. All the operations that were shown on the previous slide were just one item. We had addition, we had subtraction, we had multiplication. What happens and how does the wording look when more than one of these occur simultaneously in an equation or in an expression? So if we start out with 8 less than the product of a number and 4. Well, with our phrasing, the portion here that states we are having the product of a number and 4, what does the word product mean in mathematics? Well, product is the answer to multiplication. So we have 4x. We're not told a variable this time, so we can select our own. So how do we do 8 less than this? Well, we have 8, and less than denotes subtraction. So we have 4x minus 8 as a way of interpreting 8 less than the product of a number and 4. Let's take a look at the next one. What is twice the sum of a number and 14? Well, we need to start out with the sum of a number in 14. Well, sum denotes which mathematical operation, and the answer to that is addition. So we have some number, n, and 14, and we're having their sum, so that's addition. Now, once we have this sum, we need twice that value. Twice denotes two times that quantity. So we can write as 2 times parenthesis n plus 14 or simply 2 parenthesis n plus 14. So having a large English vocabulary and a translator from English to math to be able to work on how do we move between these different representations. Our last one here, the quotient of 6 and the difference of a number and 3. So how do we denote quotient? How do we denote difference? Well, difference is where we're starting on this one. So difference is the answer to subtraction problem. We have the difference of a number and 3, so that will give us p minus 3, and we need the quotient of that and 6 or sorry, 6 and that. So this is a quantity, and we are dividing 6 by this. So we can write it as, as such, as seen. We can say 6 over p minus 3. We can also say 6 divided by p minus 3. So again, lots of different ways of representing the same item mathematically, but all meaning the same thing. Quotient is division, difference is subtraction, and look at how your phrasing is and the order of items that are being given. Now with these variable expressions, we've been going from English into math, but you should be able to go both directions. What happens if I have 3x minus 4? How could this be expressed in a verbal or written form. Well, what are we doing here? We have multiplication, so we can say the product of 3 and x less 4. 
less being subtraction. It's a little awkward, older style English. We could say three times a quantity minus four. We could say four less than the product of three and a number. So there's a lot of different ways of structuring these different representations. But the reason we use expressions and the reason that we have these variables for our items is so that we can put meaning and structure to the world around us. So how can we use this to represent something that's going on in a situation? We need to write a rule using words and using mathematical symbols for the given situation. How many sections are created inside a polygon when you draw line segments from any one vertex to all of the vertices? So to do this, we need to get some sort of feeling about what's happening. So if I start with a square, and I start at any vertex, and we'll take this one here, and draw lines to all the other vertices. Well, the only one that's not already connected is here. And let me do that in a color we can tell the difference on. So there. Now, how many sections were created? I started with four sides, and I ended up with two sections. What if I go up to the next shape? What if I start with a pentagon? Which a pentagon is any five-sided shape. Now start at any one vertex and draw line segments to the other vertices. The only two that I need are these ones. So if I have five sides, I end up with three sections. Okay. What if I move up? What if I start out with a hexagon, which is a six-sided shape? So I have six sides. How many sections do I end up with? Well, if I start at this vertex and draw out to all vertices not already connected, I end up with four sections. So how am I doing this? I don't want to have to do this all the way out to a thousand-sided shape. How can I note what's happening? Well, it seems to me that the number of sections here on the bottom and then the number of sides here on the top, if I take the number of sides and subtract two, I end up with the number of sections. So how could I represent that as an equation? Well, I could say n, the number of sides, less 2, or minus 2, is the number of sections created. From a written standpoint, I can say that the number of sections is 2 less than the number of sides on the polygon. So that means if I were to start out with a polygon that has 84 sides, so continuing this out, if I start with 84 sides, using my expression, I would end up with 82 sections and be able to use that in all situations. So being able to interpret from English into math, from a math written form into English, and giving voice or representation to a real situation are where we can use variables and these variable expressions as we move forward in our understanding. So make sure you have this vocabulary down. This is a key part of being able to understand algebra. In fact, many learned this in previous classes, pre-algebra, or even more basic foundational stuff from there.